Today, we'll be walking through the Optics Tracker software. To get started, we'll create a new user by clicking the New User button. You'll be prompted to enter a name and age. Click Save, and you'll be prompted to accept the user agreement. This states that you have notified your patient that you'll be recording their eye movement data. Once accepted, you'll immediately see a calibration pop-up window through the Toby Pro Eye Tracker Manager. First, we'll select the eye tracker on the top left, named Large Eye Tracker. Then we click the Calibrate button. We'll click on the Settings button to show various calibration types. There are options for two, six, or eight dots. We recommend six or eight dots for the most accurate calibration. To the left, you'll see an indicator showing if your positioning is optimal for calibration. Shift closer or further from the display to make sure the indicator is green before you start. Then click the Calibrate button on the bottom right corner. It will ask you to gaze at each dot until it pops. Please try to keep your head stationary while this process is being done. Once the calibration is complete, we can go back to Optics Tracker. If you wish to recalibrate at any point, you can simply click on the Calibrate button on the bottom left corner. This is the test section, where you'll see the various tests that are available. There are two ways to start tests. One is by clicking the Start button below the test. This will only perform one test and show you the results after. The other option is to start a custom test. This allows you to sequentially walk through various tests and then all the results will be shown at the end. The toggles listed allow you to add or remove a specific test from that custom sequence. We'll cover each test briefly so you understand the objective and what will happen during the test. Note that each test will also provide audio instructions before starting. In horizontal pursuits, the user must follow the target as it moves smoothly from left to right. In vertical pursuits, the user must follow the target as it moves smoothly from the top to bottom edges of the screen. In circular pursuits, the user must follow the target as it moves smoothly in a circle. In horizontal saccades, the user must gaze quickly at the target the moment it appears. The target will then flash from left to right. In vertical saccades, the user must gaze quickly at the target the moment it appears. The target will flash from top to bottom. In static fixation, the user must hold their gaze on the center of the various targets shown. In dynamic fixation, the user must hold their gaze on the center dot while they shake their head from side to side. In visual reaction time, the user must first gaze at the center, then quickly look at the target in the periphery. In visual motor reaction time, the user will gaze at the center, then react to the target by pressing the number shown. We'll walk through a circular pursuit test in this demo. We'll click the start button to begin. There will be audio instructions provided before the test begins. These are the results for this test. You'll notice that we have the right eye and left eye movements recorded separately. The right eye is designated by the red color, the left is green. On the right side, you'll notice a plot style option. This allows you to toggle between lines or dots. We are currently showing the results as lines, so every dot of the user's gaze is connected in sequence. If you toggle the dots, you'll see the raw points collected from the eye tracker. We have some basic stats available for each activity. The accuracy is how well the user stays on the target. The reaction time is the speed at which the user reacts to the target. In some tests, you'll see one of these stats or the other, sometimes both. On the right side, you'll notice a gaze position section. This is not showing anything at the moment, but it will show during the replay. Let's talk about the replay feature. By clicking the replay button on the bottom, we can replay all of the user's eye movements as they were recorded. Now you can see that the gaze position section is being drawn, and you can see where each eye is looking relative to the other. There are also two additional charts for visualizing the data. We have the gaze error plot, which displays the accuracy of the user's eye gaze relative to the target. If the dots are closer to the center, the higher the accuracy is. The units of this plot are in degrees, with the edges currently at 13 and negative 13 degrees. This value may be different depending on how close your user sits to the display and how big your display is. We'll cover how to customize this setting to be more accurate to your display in the custom settings section. We also have a time series plot. This displays the horizontal and vertical movement of the eye 
on independent axes over time. Both of these plots also can be replayed. The last feature is the saving and screenshot feature. If at any point you wish to save the results, you can click on the save icon in the top right corner. This will convert the results into a PNG image file. Let's go over the reading analysis test. Under the test section, we'll click start from under the reading analysis section. We'll be presented with a dropdown to select a grade level from 1 to 10. Then you can select a passage on the right. Click on the preview button to take a quick peek at the passage. The dark mode toggle is checked by default. This keeps the background black and the text white. If you wish for a white background with black text, uncheck this box. We also have the option to create custom passages. To start the reading test, we'll select the passage we want, then click Start. The user will be instructed to gaze at the dot to read the passage, then press any key when they are finished. Once finished, the user will be prompted to answer some yes or no questions. Then they'll click finished when they are done. The results will be plotted on the passage as shown. There are various plots that also can be displayed. Like before, we can view the gaze results as dots or lines. Notice that the line is yellow and not green or red. The yellow line is the average gaze of both eyes. By clicking the right-left toggle, you can visualize the individual eye results. You can also remove the yellow display by deselecting it. We also have visualization for fixation and regressions. You can toggle these on and off as we see here. Lastly, you can also replay these results to see how the user reads in real time. We also have the gaze display available to show how the eyes are moving relative to each other at any given moment. On the bottom, you'll see the specific stats from the reading rate, words per minute, fixations, regressions, and comprehension accuracy. Let's walk through how to create a custom passage. We'll click Create Passage. Then you'll see many custom parameters including page width, font size, passage name, and grade. We'll name this test passage, and we'll paste in a passage we wrote. From here, we can drag the sliders to adjust the width and font. Now we can also add yes or no questions to test reading comprehension. We'll click the Edit Questions button to show the questions menu. We can enter our questions here and also select the right answers. When you are finished, click Save Passage to save all of the passage and the test questions you wrote. And then you'll notice your passage is now on the list for that grade level. Now let's look at the results when we take more than one test. In this example, we took a custom test and have multiple results. You'll see a preview of all the results here. You can click on the page number on the bottom to cycle between pages. And like before, you can also click on the Save button on the top right corner to save all the results onto an image. Now let's look at the History tab on the left. This will display all the tests that user has taken historically. Each entry indicates which tests were taken by the icons shown. By clicking the entry, the results will be loaded onto the results screen and you can view, replay, or save the results just like before. Now let's look at the compare tab on the left side. This allows you to compare results side by side with the results from another time. If the specific test was not taken, the results for that test will remain blank. The save option is also available on the top right corner. Let's take a look at the Settings tab on the left. This allows you to customize various parameters in the test. You can change the background of the test from black to a grid, grass, or sky. When the background is black, you can also customize the target from these selection of symbols. The Color Changes toggle makes the color change over time as the user takes the test. When the background is non-black, the target is shown as a sphere. The color of these spheres can be customized here. The target size can also be customized. The default size is set to 50. The Gaze Visualizer toggle can be used to see where the eyes are looking in real time. We recommend turning this off during most tests as it may distract the user from getting accurate results. However, if you wish to toggle it on at any time, you can press the G key or clicking the toggle here. The Saccade speed allows you to customize the speed of the Saccades. This is the amount of time the target is held in the position before it flashes to the other position. The default is 0.8 seconds. The Reading section allows you to set the current testing setup for gaze error and time series calculations. The screen width, height, and distance are currently optimized for a 24-inch monitor with the user sitting two feet away from the display. If you wish to change this, please make sure to use the correct units in centimeters. This concludes all of our tests and settings. 
If you have any questions, please reach out to us at contact at optics trainer.com.